Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I want to show you how you can make panoramas in Lightroom. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Sir Germany, I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the incredible city of Paris, France. And I make two videos per week, every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. and every Friday at 9 a.m. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and that you click the little bell so you get a notification every time I make a video. All right, let me show you the behind the scenes of a photo shoot I did with some really cool panoramas and I'm gonna show you some really cool tips on stitching and retouching panoramas. That's gonna happen where it's gonna get really red. Yeah. And I think that's what we're gonna be getting tonight. Cool. It's gonna be awesome. It was probably one of the most spectacular weeks of my entire life. If not existence, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> One thing I want to do here, which is crazy, and that is the right light is on the right side and the cool subject is on the left side, which is downtown LA. So I'm gonna make a panel starting from the right light all the way to downtown. Right now, the clouds are above me and there's no cloud in front of me. That means that in about 10 minutes, the sun is gonna come under the clouds and we should see some really nice red and orange in the sky. And I'm gonna be there shooting, I'm gonna make pano, and I'm gonna make, again, a long exposure, an extreme long exposure of these crazy colors in the sky. We'll see what comes best. My God, I wish this would be in my LA book, because it's so cool. It just is so cool. It's that like one, it lasts literally a minute. But wow. that's the best, because it's gonna get even more red. Yeah. Lower the sun, uh, it's gonna get even more red. All right, so we are back in the studio and I wanna show you what I got and some really cool tricks about stitching panorama. So you can see here, I got these four different files. And what I'm gonna do, this is just the raw file on retouch. I'm gonna right click and go to photo merge panorama. The thing that's amazing about photo merge and panorama is that back in the day, what we had to do to stitch photos is we had to retouch every single photo and then at the end we would make the panorama. But the problem was, let's say that you white balance at the end of the day once you stitch everything, you don't like it, you can't really go back because the raw files have been retouched, they are now like TIFF files, and the TIFF files have been put into one big panorama. A while back ago, Adobe came up with this super raw file. What it is is that you can take your raw files and make them into a super panorama raw file. It's amazing and that's what it looks like so you've got three types of projections. Now, what is a projection? Well, to make it simple, it's just different way of stitching the photos together, all right? So by default, you come to cylindrical, which in this one works really well. You have spherical. Spherical is gonna be very similar, but usually it's a little tighter. Uh, you have less heights in, in the photo. And then you have perspective. Now, perspective is really good to use when you have like buildings and uh, architecture stuff that I want to show you later on. So for now, I'm going to use cylindrical because it's going to match the best. This was the beginning of that sunset. Uh, it was a beautiful view from Pasadena over downtown in Los Angeles, California. But you see, we have an issue. We have all this white here. And there is an amazing option called boundary wrap. If I move this all the way to the right, check this, what's, what's going to happen. Basically, it's going to fill all that space. And, uh, and now we don't have this anymore, which is really cool. 
Uh, auto crop in this case is not needing because what it is is like, let's say I don't do the boundary wrap. If you click here on auto crop, it's basically going to crop it for you. But the best thing if you want to get the most pixel is to use boundary wrap because it's going to create the missing pixel. Okay, auto crop is actually going to take them out. Next, we have auto settings. I never use that because auto settings is uh, basically going to try to retouch the photo for you. And you will see we're going to use some amazing presets to retouch these photos. And so all I'm going to do is click on merge. But I've already done it. And here is the panorama. Now, to retouch this photo, I'm going to give you my natural everyday light free pack. I have a very cool way to install preset. The link is in the description of the video. All right. So now that I've got my really cool presets, all I have to do in this one, for example, is click the golden hour linear circle. And most of it is already retouched. It's really cool. Uh, you know, you, when you use one of the presets, you have to make sure you use the black point. You want to have about two or 3% of the photo completely black. You want to have a white point. You don't want to have anything too much burn. Uh, let me put this like this so that we have more space. I'm going to make this a bit smaller and uh, maybe add a bit of contrast. I think on this one, I want to add a tad of bit of magenta. And then uh, you click here where the circle is and make sure that this circle is where the sun is. That's very important. And while I look at this panorama, this is really cool. I love this one. This view was amazing. And I really had this idea of having downtown on the left side and the sky, you know, the good sky on the right side. Okay, so basically I did this over and over again. Also, one little trick when you shoot the panorama, just make sure you got about 30% of uh, overlap uh, in your photo. So right click, photo merge, panorama. And also, sometimes, you know, a lot of people, they do panorama in portrait mode, uh, you know, and if you do that, it's going to take you a lot more photo to cover your scene, but you get more sky and more land. In some cases, it's awesome. For these panoramas, it was not really needed. So that's how it looks out of the, you know, out of the photo merge, I'm going to click on boundary wrap and um, or on this one, I can go to auto crop and click merge. So I've already done it and here it is. And um, I'm going to use one of my presets. So I'm going to go here. Actually, I forgot to do the auto crop. So I'm going to auto crop it here. And uh, you can also crop it yourself to really decide what you want. Yes, I want to make it a little less panorama, something like this. And then I'm going to go here. And I'm going to use my golden hour linear circle, or I'm going to use a sunset preset in this case, for example, sunset preset. And then of course you do your the black point. Now this one is way too strong. See, you, you don't want two or 3%. So every time you use the preset, you have to use the black point and the white point. That's very important because it's going to make your photo, you know, properly exposed. And maybe I'm going to boost your overall exposure. And it, it got really red guys. It was so red. So make sure this, this circle is where the sun was and uh, maybe even brighter. And voila, that's our second panorama that we shot that night. All right, so the last panorama of this incredible day, uh, same thing, I take all four photos here. I right click photo merge panorama really quick. In this case, I will use cylindrical. I'm not going to do the auto crop just to show you the other options you have. And this is what you're, you're, you're going to get. I'm first going to retouch it using the preset I'm giving you. So this one I'm going to use again, the sunset preset crazy. Okay. Again, I'm going to check my black point. Ooh, and my white point, make sure I don't want to burn the sun too much. Make it brighter. Voila. Make sure you crop it right. So on this one, I want to crop it a little, maybe have a little bit less of sun here, getting a little bit closer. I mean, these are really long panoramas. And again, making sure that the, uh, the, the radial circle is where the sun is supposed to be. And voila. So that was the last one of this beautiful sunset. Now, I want to talk to you about uh, architecture type of photos. So this is a photo I shot, a panorama I shot in Rodeo Drive. You can see one, two, three, four. And this time I did, I was at 24 millimeter and I did uh, do it into portrait mode. So I'm going to right click photo merge panorama. Now I took on purpose this panorama because this one, if you want to get the building kind of straight, you're going to have to use the perspective mode. 
You could use cylindrical and I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So here I am. Uh, look at cylindrical, look at the top of the building, how they are. And if you click on perspective, at first it's going to look really weird, but you will see in the end we get a better result. So I went ahead and I actually did both panels. So this one is cylindrical and this one is perspective. Now uh, to retouch it, I'm going to use my daylight preset, which is here, daylight the inner circle. I'm just going to make my black point holding the option key as usual, make the white point. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to use a golden hour. I'm going to use a golden hour one. Yeah, golden layer circle, make the black point, make the white point. It's right on. And just that so we see what we're doing and you see it's kind of weird, but then so we here and you see I'm going to use guided and guided is so cool. I, I just click one time here on this wall. I make sure I do a line that's following that wall and then I do another one here following that wall and check this out. I'm going to get a pretty straight rodeo drive. Then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to the crop tool and I'm going to crop the photo a lot because perspective is going to make the borders look really weird. At the end of the day, my photo is still a really big photo, 14,000 pixels wide. And uh, that's how it look. Now, you have to go where the circle is. I have to find a circle in this photo. What happens is if you use the preset, sometimes the circle can get lost. So I'm going to reset the circle because it, it, uh, it was too big for this photo. That's the problem with using perspective. So you have to redo the circle where the sun is. So I invert it, I feather it. I just add a bit of yellow and magenta and a bit of exposure, you know, just where the sun is. It's very important and boom, that's the basic retouching of this photo. Okay, just to give you a comparison, this is the cylindrical projection. And in this one, I can do the same thing. I can go here. Well, first let's use the golden hour linear circle, uh, the same preset. Okay, let's click here. Let's make sure the preset is at the right location. Right now it's here. I want to make it where the sun is. And you can make the circle smaller. Yeah, every preset has a circle, so you got to watch for that. Voila, something like this. Okay, you, first you use the preset to retouch, then you do your perspective. And on this one, I'm going to do the same thing, guided. But you see, it needs a lot less work because of the projection that I used. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to crop it. And then we're going to compare the way the photos were stitched. And you will see that I find, at least that's my personal test, that perspective gives a better result. So that's, I'm going to select both, go C, shift tab to go in full screen mode. Okay, so on the left side, you've got the cylindrical projection. And on the right side, you got uh, the perspective projection. You see, I find that it gives a more natural result. All right. If you do like this video, just click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will see you next Friday for another episode.